Okay, so I know I'm about to sound like a hater right now, but honestly, I don't really care. I would much rather share the truth of how I feel about something than try to like balance the beam of not making anybody upset or pleasing this side. So I'm just gonna tell you how I feel. But rather than telling you do this or don't do that, I'm gonna tell you why I don't do this. So here are five reasons why I think submitting your music to independent playlists on Spotify is a waste of time. Now, if you're new here, my name's Tom, and on this channel, we talk about music marketing, branding, business, and a host of other things that are gonna help us move from making music as a hobby to making music as a business. And today, I'm gonna share with you five different reasons I personally believe that submitting your music to independent playlists on Spotify is completely pointless and a waste of time. I haven't submitted my music to playlists through playlisters or playlisting platforms for well over a year, and the results I've had within the last year dwarf the results I had before that when I was going through playlisting services. When I was trying to get my music playlisted uh, and going through platforms and keeping spreadsheets of playlisters and contacting them with each release, my following stayed stagnant on Spotify and so did my streams. And I didn't make any money. In fact, I lost a ton of money. So five reasons I think submitting your music to Spotify playlisters is a waste of time. And make sure you stick around to the end because number five is by far the most important one. Number one, first and foremost, you're asking for permission from a gatekeeper. Now the traditional music industry is built on top of gatekeepers, asking for permission from managers, from labels, from radio stations, from bloggers. And playlisting is no different. You are giving your song to one person and asking for them to give you permission to show your song to a bunch of other people. When you could just bypass that single person and go directly to the people themselves with either paid advertising with Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Snapchat ads, TikTok ads, YouTube ads, or with just growing yourself organically as an artist and making genuine one-on-one -on -one connections with other people. Rather than going through one person to get to everybody, just bypass that one person and go to everybody. Secondly, you are opening yourself up to useless feedback. When you are pitching a song to playlisters, that song is complete, it's done, it's mastered, it's finished, it is either out already or about to be out already. And usually what happens is if they don't pick your song, they'll give you something like, oh, the mix isn't good enough, could have mastered it louder, uh, I didn't like the melody, all things you're not gonna change. You're not gonna change any of these things about the track because the track you just showed them is finished. You're getting feedback for what? For the next song? Well, the next song's probably not gonna sound like this song. So again, the feedback is pretty much useless in my opinion and in my experience. Number three, playlisting with independent playlists very rarely, if ever, leads to long-term fans. And long-term fans and listeners are the way to grow yourself as an artist. Creating a group of people, a community of people who are in love with your work, who want to keep coming back to hear your work and hear the new work that you put out and engage with you wherever you are available to talk to people. This is the way you grow a business, having customers who return to your business, not one-off people so that you have to earn new customers every time you drop a song or release a product in a traditional business. If Coca-Cola had to go out and find new people to drink Coke every single time they made a soft drink, they would be out of business. They rely on repeat customers, people who go to the store every week and buy Coca-Cola and take it home because that's what they do. They drink Coke every single day. Your music is no different. And with playlisting, you are not earning those people. You are getting one-time listeners who are probably not gonna come back for a second listen. Number four, it's not a financially viable long-term strategy. Because of the reason I just mentioned about not having long-term fans almost exclusively, it's not a viable long-term play. Every single time you release a track, you are having to pay to get in front of people to get your song listened to. Almost never are you going to recoup the amount you pay to submit your song from the amount of streams you get as a result of the playlists you will get on. So it's a net negative financially every single time. If you're methodical about building an audience and building a brand through organic and paid advertising direct to consumer, then you have this snowball effect that grows over time. You are pulling 
loyal brand participants into your umbrella of your business, of your music. So every time you drop a song, not only are you getting new people, but you are also getting the people you've already earned in the past to participate in your art. And then number five, the best thing you can expect when submitting to independent playlists on Spotify is to actually get added to these playlists. That's the victory. That's what you want. That's the goal. But getting added to these playlists actually hurts you in the long run when it comes to the algorithms on Spotify. And the algorithms on Spotify are the most powerful thing on that platform for expanding your reach. Your goal should be to take advantage of those algorithms because if you can leverage them correctly, you get tons of free advertising for your music that you didn't have to pay for because Spotify will throw the song out to a ton of users that you didn't necessarily pay to access in the beginning. Getting added to independent playlists tanks your save rate for your song, tanks the repeat listener rate for your song, and nets you less streams so you don't end up getting on those algorithmic playlists. And not only do you not end up getting on them, it hurts your future releases as well because all of your data is gonna be completely screwed up on Spotify. So not only are you gonna to have to start from zero, you're actually starting from less than zero the further down the rabbit hole of playlisting you go. And then number six as a bonus, because I know somebody out there is sitting here saying, so you're saying I shouldn't want to get added to any playlists that anybody else makes. Well, that seems really stupid. It's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is any good playlister is going to be looking for good new music to add to their playlist so that people will listen to their playlist. So if you play the game right and you grow organically and methodically with direct advertising and organic marketing and you grow on Spotify, good playlisters are going to find your song. If you want good playlisters playlisting your song, the best thing you can do is to try to build a fan base directly to individuals rather than going through a gatekeeper who hosts an independent playlist. So what do you think about playlisting? Hate this video? Hate what I have to say? Let me know in the comments. Agree with me? Let me know in the comments as well. I would love to hear your feedback. Love to have a dialogue with you about why I feel this way. And if you feel differently, I would love to know why that is as well. Now, lastly, before I let you go, if you don't subscribe to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And at the end here, got a couple videos you can check out. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.